So this is the book, Prophecy. <clears throat> it was after 2008. And I said the biggest crash was coming. It's here now. Yeah. And the question again, and, and that the guys, and, and they're still fighting it, and it's still going to happen anyway. But why does we're this fight about? It? It's going to get what? worse than people think. Even now, when it's finally starting to get go down, despite endless. I, I, I understand. So my question again is: I, I'm, I'm talking to your audience, not you, Robert. Okay. Yeah. Why don't? Why I don't you understand? Why don't people listen to idiots like us? <laughs> why do they believe these guys? Like, you know, have you heard of the uh, Kramer factor, Jim Kramer? Whatever Kramer predicts, you go short. What I can't even watch he's, this guy. He's the, I, I, he's, a, he's a smart idiot. He just entertains. <laughs> he has nothing to do with the truth. All I do is research what happens in history and, and <laughs> what causes things and what doesn't. And that's the truth. So and you do not get a bubble like this. There has been no bubble every time, any time in all of history that has not burst badly and I, rapidly when it does. And it's already started. And uh, people Harry. still in denial included stupid Kramer. <laughs> <laughs> He's an idiot. Doesn't he not look like an idiot? Does he act like an idiot? Well, he's like a duck. He's a so duck. Harry, Harry, my question to you is, is it one of the problems is people choose the wrong prophet? Well, no, they, they choose what they want to hear. Every, yes. If you're in a boom and you're invested in the boom, I mean, everyday people didn't used to have so much money in stocks. It was more in real estate. And real estate does not go down like stocks does. Real estate is more stable even when it goes down. And they everybody now has to root for this thing to keep going. And so they'll listen to the people that say, oh, no, don't worry about this. Don't worry about debt levels. Don't worry about demographics declining, which they're declining at the speed of light in all developed countries in the world. Uh, somehow the government will bring us out of this. Uh, so, Kim, yeah, Kim, Kim, we got, hey, Harry, we're, we're, we're the new age men. We're going to give the yeah. one so We're not going to be listened to until we're right, and then it'll be too late. That's yeah. my point. Well, I, got, I, got, I got two comments, and to your point, Harry, of course, if you're, if you're vested heavy in the stock market, you only want to hear that the stock market's going to keep going up. That's what you're going to pay attention to. My question is then you're on the demographics of the baby boomers. They they went at, at their peak in 2007. What's yeah. the impact of millennials? Are they going to have okay. a. The millennials bring us up through natural causes instead of printing money from 2024. And I, I'm very precise about this. I said from the beginning, the baby boom thing was going to peak in late 2007. I said that in the 80s. That's how <laughs> predictable people Earning and spending money as they age are in generational surges, and the baby boom was a big surge. So, of course, a great boom. So We've been you? down ever since then. The millennials do not bring the upward natural momentum until 2024, and they will peak by 2037, much shorter boom than the baby boomers. So what? So when was what was it? You know, boomers uh, were like 50s. I mean, 46 to 64 was a boom generation. Was there was a Gen X be behind us? Yeah. Well, okay. Let me be more precise. Gen X, because let's, let's go. Turned up, turned up noticeably from 1937 into 61. That's the rising baby boom, which on a lag, predictable, quantifiable lag for peak spending at 46, moving towards 47, would have given us a peak in late 2007. I've been preaching that since the 80s. <laughs> and people, people back then were saying, Harry, you're crazy. The U.S. is done. Asia's taking over. Japanese make us look like idiots, you know? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, they're growing and they're going to grow longer. But we still have the greatest baby boom in the world. And we're going to have the greatest boom in history until 2007. And then it's going to clap. Who is Gen X and what's their challenge now? Because that's a large generation. Too. Not a large. Gen, Gen a X is the declining birth rates from 1961 into 73 to 75 that would that caused the slowdown from 2008 still into 2022 23 before the millennials born after them take it up and even the millennials here's the important point and nobody gets this okay even the millennials with their spending power as a smaller generation less long in birth only take us back to where the baby boomers took us we only get back to even adjusted for rising productivity. We will never see a boom like 1983 to 2007 again in the US and most of the developed world will never and Europe's okay. already behind us. Okay, so that's the, the truth. So my question is what's gonna to happen to Gen X? Cause they're the sandwich, they're sandwiched right now. They're the spread. Oh. 
well, they're causing the slowdown, but they kind of benefit because when asset prices go down eventually, which they aren't yet, the government won't let, when they do finally crash, they're going to be able to invest at more reasonable prices again and, and be able to invest for retirement. I tell you, anybody right now in the markets, whether it be bond markets at the lowest interest rates ever long term or stock markets, the highest valuation, if you invest today, even with no predictions of up and down economy, you're likely to make, you know, a couple percent a year for the rest of your life. You're not going to be able to retire profitably until the markets come down to reality and you can invest at fair asset prices again. Okay, let, across the board. I'll, let, I'll let Kim ask, give her a breath here before we go to break. So Kim, any final thoughts or things you want to I say? Want, to I want to go back to the millennial generation because on the demographic side, because I see, okay, so, you know, so much has changed in the economy. People aren't going to work in the office building anymore. They're, they're working from home. Millennials don't seem to be having the income that baby boomers had. They seem to have a different work ethic. Does that play into the cycles of earning money, spending money, all of that? Ask me how long I've been working at home. It's 1989, okay? This is a new trend everywhere. It's a good trend. People don't have to spend an hour or two commuting every day and sitting in the car. It's only more productive, okay? It's just that the millennials are causing with less spending than the baby boomers who already peaked at age 46 to 47 before them. They're causing a slowdown. And instead of governments helping to restructure debt. We've got tons of bad debt now from the great boom from 83 to 2007 that needs to be restructured. They're encouraging people to keep that bad debt in place and not to reinvest in new industries and stuff. They're doing all the wrong things because they don't want to have a recession. You know what recession is to me? Sleep. Try not sleeping for three days and, and not become a crazy person. It's already proven. Three to five days, no sleep, you'll become a crazy person. We have to grow and, 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 and expand all the innovation of the past. And we have to slow again and restructure and cut out losing companies and losing things and reinvest in the future. And governments are interrupting the free market capitalist system that has made us the richest and the greatest advance since the late 1700s in all of history because they don't want to have a damn recession. You need to eat you know, stupid. Harry, Harry you need the stupidest thing I've ever seen. That's Harry, Harry, you need to take three days off. Anyway, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a stupid. The stupidest, this will go down as the stupidest <laughs> thing in all of history, greatest boom in history. And just when it needs to restructure, they screw it up so we can never grow again because okay. we never okay. restructure okay. bad debt. 